A land where the sands of time whisper tales of valor and betrayal, of love and loss. This is the sacred land of Israel and Palestine, a land where the echoes of the past resonate with a power that transcends generations. Here, amidst the labyrinthine streets of Jerusalem and the rolling hills of Galilee, lies a saga as old as time itself. A saga of two peoples, bound by a common history and destiny, yet torn asunder by the ravages of war and strife. From the ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah to the modern-day battlegrounds of the West Bank and Gaza, the story of this land is one of conquest and liberation, of occupation and resistance. It is a story that has shaped the course of human civilization, leaving an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of all who dare to tread upon its hallowed ground. From the ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah to the rise of great civilizations like the Assyrians, Babylonians, and Persians, this land has been a crossroads of cultures and faiths for millennia. Jerusalem, with its sacred sites revered by Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike, stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of faith and devotion that has shaped the identity of this land. In the 20th century, the seeds of conflict were sown with the rise of Zionism and the quest for a Jewish homeland in Palestine. The struggle for self-determination and sovereignty ignited tensions between Arabs and Jews, setting the stage for the modern-day conflict that continues to shape the destiny of this land. Key areas of the conflict include the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza Strip, the status of Jerusalem, Israeli settlements, borders, security and water rights, as well as Palestinian freedom of movement and the Palestinian right of return. As we journey through the echoes of the past, we are reminded that the history of Israel and Palestine is not just a chronicle of conquest and colonization, but a mosaic of cultures and civilizations that have left their indelible mark on the land and its people. The seeds of conflict in Israel and Palestine have deep roots, nourished by decades of grievances, violence, and mistrust. The struggle for control of this land has engendered a cycle of retaliation and resistance, where each act of aggression fuels further animosity and despair. The conflict has its origins in the arrival of Jewish immigrants and settlers to Palestine in the late 19th and 20th centuries and the advent of the Zionist movement. The local Arab population opposed Zionism, primarily out of fear of territorial displacement and dispossession. The Zionist movement garnered the support of an imperial power in the 1917 Balfour Declaration issued by Britain, which promised to support the creation of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Following World War I, Mandatory Palestine was established, and tensions grew into open sectarian conflict between Jews and Arabs. In 1936, an Arab revolt erupted demanding independence, which the British suppressed. With the commitment to establishing a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, the creation of the British Mandate in Palestine after the end of the First World War would allow for large-scale Jewish immigration. This would be accompanied by the development of a separate Jewish-controlled sector of the economy which was supported with large amounts of capital from abroad. The more ardent Zionist ideologues of the Second Aliyah would become the leaders of the Yishuv starting in the 1920s and believed in the separation of Jewish and Arab economies and societies. During this period, the exclusionary nationalist ethos would grow to overpower the socialist ideals that the Second Aliyah had arrived with. In the early 1930s, the Arab national struggle in Palestine had drawn many Arab nationalist militants from across the Middle East, such as Sheikh Zadan al-Qassam from Syria, 
who established the Black Hand Militant Group and had prepared the grounds for the 1936-1939 Arab Revolt in Palestine. Following the death of Al-Qassam at the hands of the British in late 1935, tensions erupted in 1936 into the Arab general strike and general boycott. The strike soon deteriorated into violence, and the Arab revolt was bloodily repressed by the British assisted by the British armed forces of the Jewish Settlement Police, the Jewish Supernumerary Police, and Special Night Squads. The suppression of the revolt would leave at least 14% of the adult male population killed, wounded, imprisoned or exiled, 53, in the first wave of organized violence, lasting until early 1937, most of the Arab groups were defeated by the British, and forced expulsion of much of the Arab leadership ensued. With much of the leadership in exile and the economy severely weakened, the Palestinians would struggle to confront the Zionist movement which was growing in strength, with the support of the British. The renewed violence, which continued sporadically until the beginning of World War II, ended with around 5,000 casualties on the Arab side and 700 combined on the British and Jewish side total. With the eruption of World War II, the situation in mandatory Palestine calmed down. It allowed a shift towards a more moderate stance among Palestinian Arabs under the leadership of the Nashashibi clan and even the establishment of the Jewish Arab Palestine Regiment under British command, fighting Germans in North Africa. The more radical exiled faction of Al Husseini, however, tended to cooperate with Nazi Germany, and participated in the establishment of a pro-Nazi propaganda machine throughout the Arab world. The defeat of Arab nationalists in Iraq and subsequent relocation of Al Husseini to Nazi-occupied Europe tied his hands regarding field operations in Palestine, though he regularly demanded that the Italians and the Germans bomb Tel Aviv. By the end of World War II, a crisis over the fate of Holocaust survivors from Europe led to renewed tensions between the Yishuv and Mandate authorities. Increased illegal immigration from Jewish refugees, along with a paramilitary campaign of resistance against British authorities by Zionist militias, would effectively overturn the White Paper and eventually lead to the withdrawal of the British. Following the declaration of the establishment of the State of Israel on May 14, 1948, the Arab League decided to intervene on behalf of Palestinian Arabs, marching their forces into former British Palestine, beginning the main phase of the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The overall fighting, leading to around 15,000 casualties, resulted in ceasefire and armistice agreements of 1949, with Israel holding much of the former Mandate territory, Jordan occupying and later annexing the West Bank and Egypt taking over the Gaza Strip, where the All-Palestine government was declared by the Arab League on September 22, 1948. The construction of Israeli settlements in the occupied territories remains a major point of contention in the conflict. Palestinians view these settlements as a violation of international law and a barrier to the establishment of a viable Palestinian state. Through the 1950s, Jordan and Egypt supported the Palestinian Fedayeen militants' cross-border attacks into Israel, while Israel carried out its own reprisal operations in the host countries. The 1956 Suez Crisis resulted in a short-term Israeli occupation of the Gaza Strip and exile of the All-Palestine government, which was later restored with Israeli withdrawal. The All-Palestine government was completely abandoned by Egypt in 1959 and was officially merged into the United Arab Republic, to the detriment of the Palestinian National Movement. Gaza Strip then was put under the authority of the Egyptian military administrator, making it a de facto military occupation. 
In 1964, however, a new organization, the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, was established by Yasser Arafat. It immediately won the support of most Arab League governments and was granted a seat in the Arab League. The 1967 Six-Day War exerted a significant effect upon Palestinian nationalism, as Israel gained military control of the West Bank from Jordan and the Gaza Strip from Egypt. Consequently, the PLO was unable to establish any control on the ground and established its headquarters in Jordan, home to hundreds of thousands of Palestinians, and supported the Jordanian army during the War of Attrition, which included the Battle of Karameh. However, the Palestinian base in Jordan collapsed with the Jordanian-Palestinian Civil War in 1970. The PLO defeat by the Jordanians caused most of the Palestinian militants to relocate to South Lebanon, where they soon took over large areas, creating the so-called Fataland. The first Palestinian uprising began in 1987 as a response to escalating attacks and the endless occupation. By the early 1990s, international efforts to settle the conflict had begun, in light of the success of the Egyptian-Israeli Peace Treaty of 1982. Eventually, the Israeli-Palestinian peace process led to the Oslo Accords of 1993, allowing the PLO to relocate from Tunisia and take ground in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, establishing the Palestinian National Authority. The peace process also had significant opposition among radical Islamic elements of Palestinian society, such as Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who immediately initiated a campaign of attacks targeting Israelis. Following hundreds of casualties and a wave of radical anti-government propaganda, Israeli Prime Minister Rabin was assassinated by an Israeli far-right extremist who objected to the peace initiative. This struck a serious blow to the peace process, from which the newly elected government of Israel in 1996 backed off. Following several years of unsuccessful negotiations, the conflict re-erupted as the Second Intifada in September 2000. The violence, escalating into an open conflict between the Palestinian National Security Forces and the Israel Defense Forces, lasted until 2004-2005 and led to approximately 130 fatalities. In 2006, Hamas won a plurality of 44% in the Palestinian parliamentary election. Israel responded it would begin economic sanctions unless Hamas agreed to accept prior Israeli-Palestinian agreements, forswear violence, and recognize Israel's right to exist, all of which Hamas rejected. After internal Palestinian political struggle between Fatah and Hamas erupted into the Battle of Gaza, 2007, Hamas took full control of the area. In 2007, Israel imposed a naval blockade on the Gaza Strip, and cooperation with Egypt allowed a ground blockade of the Egyptian border. The tensions between Israel and Hamas escalated until late 2008, when Israel launched Operation Cast Lead upon Gaza, resulting in thousands of civilian casualties and billions of dollars in damage. By February 2009, a ceasefire was signed with international mediation between the parties, though the occupation and small and sporadic eruptions of violence continued. In 2011, a Palestinian Authority attempt to gain UN membership as a fully sovereign state failed. In Hamas-controlled Gaza, sporadic rocket attacks on Israel and Israeli air raids continued to occur. In November 2012, Palestinian representation in the UN was upgraded to a non-member observer state, and its mission title was changed from Palestine, represented by PLO, to State of Palestine. In 2014, 
Another war broke out between Israel and Gaza, resulting in over 70 Israeli and over 2,000 Palestinian casualties. After the 2014 war and 2021 crisis, Hamas began planning an attack on Israel. In 2022, Netanyahu returned to power while headlining a hardline far right government, which led to greater political strife in Israel and clashes in the Palestinian territories. This culminated in the 2023 Israel Hamas war, when Hamas led militant groups launched a surprise attack on southern Israel from the Gaza Strip killing hundreds of Israeli civilians and taking hostages. The Israeli military retaliated by conducting an extensive aerial bombardment campaign on Gaza, followed by a large-scale ground invasion with the stated goal of destroying Hamas and controlling security in Gaza afterwards. Israel killed tens of thousands of Palestinian civilians and displaced almost two million people. South Africa accused Israel of genocide at the International Court of Justice and called for an immediate ceasefire. The court ruled there was plausibility of genocide, but did not order a ceasefire. The war spilled over, with Israel engaging in clashes with local militias in the West Bank, Hezbollah in Lebanon and northern Israel, and other Iranian-backed militias in Syria. Iranian-backed militias also engaged in clashes with the United States, while the Houthis blockaded the Red Sea in protest, to which the United States responded with airstrikes in Yemen, Iraq, and Syria. From the Oslo Accords of the 1990s, which ignited a flicker of hope for a two-state solution, to the Camp David summit in 2000, where leaders grappled with the complexities of land, sovereignty, and security. These moments, though marked by setbacks, demonstrated a shared aspiration for peace. In more recent years, the Arab Peace Initiative offered a comprehensive framework for peace, encompassing diplomatic recognition, security cooperation, and the establishment of an independent Palestinian state. Similarly, the Annapolis Conference of 2007 brought Israeli and Palestinian leaders together in pursuit of a negotiated settlement. Yet amidst the political maneuvering and diplomatic wrangling, it is the grassroots movements that often illuminate the path forward. Ordinary citizens, weary of conflict, have joined hands across the divide, engaging in dialogue, fostering understanding, and planting seeds of peace in communities scarred by violence. Whether through joint Israeli-Palestinian projects, cultural exchanges, or interfaith dialogue, these initiatives embody the spirit of coexistence and mutual respect. They remind us that peace is not solely the domain of politicians and diplomats but is nurtured in the hearts and actions of ordinary people. As we gaze towards the horizon, the road to peace may seem long and daunting. But it is lined with the footsteps of those who refuse to surrender to despair, who believe in the possibility of a future where Israelis and Palestinians live side by side in dignity and security. In the end, the journey towards peace is not just about reaching a destination but about embracing the shared humanity that binds us all, transcending borders, and building bridges of understanding and reconciliation. For in the echoes of history, we find the echoes of our own aspirations for a better world. In the quiet moments between conflict and chaos, there is a longing for connection, a desire to bridge the divide that separates us and find common ground in our shared humanity. For in the end, it is our capacity for empathy and understanding that will light the path forward towards a brighter tomorrow. As the sun rises on a new chapter in the story of Israel and Palestine, let us not forget the lessons of the past or the dreams of the future. Let us stand together, hand in hand, as guardians of peace and architects of hope, for the echoes of history are calling us to a higher purpose, to a destiny forged in the fires of compassion and justice. This is not the end, 
but rather the beginning of a new journey, a journey towards a world where peace reigns supreme and the voices of the past are but whispers in the wind. And so, let us march forward with courage and conviction, for the future awaits those who dare to dream of a better tomorrow.